Hello and welcome back to Downtime Activities. Matthew here with some more Savage Worlds content for you guys. Today we're going to be going over some optional and homebrew rules that we love to use in our game just to give people kind of an idea of how we prefer to play and some cool options you can try throwing into your game. So let's check them out. To start with, the first rule that we really like to use in our games is the gritty damage rule. The way this works is that each time a character gets a wound, they have to roll on the wounds table. If they get multiple wounds from the same source, however, they're only going to make one roll on that table because it doesn't really make sense if you get shot to roll twice if there's two wounds and somehow get shot in the leg and the head. Anyway, we like using this on our games because it really makes combat in a system that's already pretty brutal with combat even more so. It makes picking fights really matter and makes those fast hard combats have sometimes long reaching follow up effects. You can get in a short scuffle with somebody in which guns are drawn and you win, but you take a shot in the arm and that might be a couple weeks where that injury is nagging and coming along with you. We like this in play. We think it makes combat really cool and really visceral. And we find that the kind of follow up of having to nurse those wounds over time really makes for cool story moments and makes the world feel really grounded and alive. Next up is a pretty simple rule, but one that I really, really enjoy that we use, and that's we don't allow binnies to be used on snake eye rolls. For those of you who don't know, rolling snake eyes, much like rolling two dice and getting two ones in any other game that refers to snake eyes, is what happens when both your trait and wild die roll a one on a skill roll. Without this rule, if a player did this, they would be able to use one of their binnies for the session and re-roll that so they don't automatically fail, but we like to have that chance of a D&D style critical fail being an opportunity. We want there to be that chance that even if you're really good at something, sometimes luck's not on your side and you just have a really bad circumstance happen. It's fun, sometimes it's goofy, it's just a good time and play, and we want there to be that chance of failing even if you've got bennies to spare. Another rule that isn't exactly a homebrew rule so much as changing an official one that we like to do is we kind of change how the common skills from the Adventure Edition work. The basic way that this works as written is all players get to start with a free rank in Athletics, Common Knowledge, Notice, Persuasion, and Stealth. We decided for our group to instead let each player just pick five skills that make sense for their character as long as they go over it with the Game Master and the Game Master is okay with it. And they can start with each of them at a D4 instead of the five that are listed from the normal common skills. We decided to do this because we really enjoy sometimes having characters who suck at stuff and stuff that a lot of people will at least be okay at. There's been countless funny stories and fun interactions that have happened because a character cannot sneak to save their life or is terrible at talking to people or for some specific situations, can't notice anything. It brings up really fun moments in play and we don't want to force all players to be at least okay at things like notice and stealth. If your character sucks at those things, that's fine and it shouldn't have to be punished and not get to get that free rank. So we like to let that kind of go where it makes sense for the character instead of just being a big umbrella that all characters should be at least okay at this thing. We also changed the way that attacks and dice explosions work for damage in our game. The basic way that we adjusted this is that attacks when we we're playing can get multiple raises. And for each raise, the character will get to roll an additional d6 of damage to stack on top of their normal weapons damage roll. The way we counteract this to make sure that we don't have this giant pile of dice that are at least one of is always going to explode is that we make it so none of these extra dice from the raises are able to explode. So for instance, if you rolled and hit with an attack and you got two raises on it, you would roll two additional d6 separate that couldn't explode, and then whatever the base damage dice were, and those could explode. We really love this in play because it gives kind of that super critical success moment. And it's so cool when you have this big kind of tight part of a combat and all of a sudden you, your character is rolling to try and get the kill shot to save the day and their dice just explodes and explodes and explodes and they get all these raises and they get to have this kind of big powerful moment and it comes up 
often enough that it's really cool and exciting, but not so often that it, like, crazily throws off the balance in combats. We really enjoy running it this way because it has these big pile of dice feeling moments, and that's what we all got into RPGs for in a lot of ways, so we love that piece. A final kind of adjustment, or not so much changing a rule as much as bringing back an old rule the way that we like it, is we use the old double tap rules, not the new way that it works in the Adventure Edition. In the Adventure Edition, the double tap combat option is an edge that characters can take. We've removed this as an option and given the old double tap rules to everybody. The way that works is when making an attack with a weapon that has ammunition, you can spend two pieces of that ammunition on the attack, so long as the weapon is capable of doing this, like a double action revolver or a semi-automatic weapon. And for doing that, you'll get a plus one to the attack and damage rolls for using that attack. It does use the two pieces of ammunition, so for instance, if you're using that double action revolver and it's got six shots, you're going to be using two out of your six to make this, but you get that bonus option should you want it. We find that this doesn't really throw off the balance in combat very much, especially since both sides can use this so long as their weapons are capable of doing so. And specifically for the game I'm running right now on the channel, our Devils of the West series, it works really well because it's kind of a Wild West style series and there's lots of people using revolvers and having that ability to double tap and fan the hammer feels really cool for a Western themed game. It may not translate perfectly in every other game, and in some it might be kind of a de facto option that your player will just use every time because their gun has enough ammo, they're not worried about burning through the clip or the whatever. But for ours, we really like it and we think it's a good option to have. That's been the optional and homebrew rules that we use in our Savage Worlds game. Feel free to use any of these in yours, check them out and see if you like them. If you do, please leave a comment down below the ones you used and liked or any optional or homebrew rules that you love using in your Savage Worlds games. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please give it a like. And if you enjoy Savage Worlds content, we do have a Savage Worlds game on the channel right now. It's called our Devils of the West campaign. Please check it out, it's been a ton of fun. Now go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities. Thank you.